I do, yeah. Great, thank you. Hey everybody, my name's Jake, and a couple years ago I drove my 08 Bonneville 9,000 miles across the United States. I'm posting this video in response to the three videos I made of my trip across the United States uh, in 2019. Um, and before I answer questions or go over gear or talk about the trip at all, I just want to say when I posted those videos, I had four subscribers. And I posted them for myself and for my friends and family to look back on the trip and remember it. I did not anticipate them getting the amount of views they have now um, or the amount of comments. The comment section of these videos have basically turned into a forum of encouragement for people that um, are hesitant to drive a motorcycle for the first time or think they're too old um, and it's been so encouraging for me to see everyone just jumping in to these comments and um, reaffirming people and encouraging them to live out their dreams and I just want to say thank you it's it's an honor to have videos with a comment section that looks like that I'm out here on Long Island camping for a few days about an hour and a half my home in Brooklyn and I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about um, questions you guys have had that popped up in the comment section over and over, uh, talk about gear, talk about the trip, um, but it is getting pretty dark so I think I will save those things for tomorrow and maybe tonight we can just cook some food and hang out.
October fire, November rain, I left the fleece on solitude again. The damp man's ground, thirsty wool, and I the faithless. morning so I guess we'll start with the questions I get asked the most often which are what kind of bike do you have what size is the engine and how did it do during the trip I have a 2008 Triumph Bonneville around 900 cc's uh, and during the trip it did great uh, it's not a touring bike in the slightest and that fairing I had on there did close to nothing but it's the bike I had and I wanted to take my bike on a trip like this um, and now I look at my bike as, as a trophy of something I did that was very difficult. <laughs> the only big issue I had was a short in the ignition housing that was draining my battery on the longest drive uh, I had during the trip. Luckily that night I ran into this guy named Raiden who worked at a place called Rapid City Motorsports um, and he took my bike in the next morning, uh, zip tied a Kawasaki switch onto the handlebars to bypass mine uh, and for the rest of the trip that worked great. So, thank you Raiden, uh, you're a lifesaver. Um, as far as maintenance goes, uh, I cleaned and lubed the chain every 500 miles or so, and I did an oil change some more in California. Um, but that's about it. I can go over all the emergency stuff I brought uh, a little later, but it didn't do too much to the bike. It held up pretty nice. Uh, so the next question I get asked a lot is how much did this trip cost? Um, I saved up around two grand, 2.5, and the costs were split pretty evenly between gas, food, lodging, whether that be camping or hotels when I had to, um, and new gear, gear that I didn't have for camping uh, and things I had to change on the bike uh, just to get it ready for this trip. For gear, I have a Wingman of the Road Goose Tent. It's a single person canvas tent, comes rolled up in a tarp, uh, has a sleeping pad and sleeping bag built into it which is not the warmest, uh, so I usually bring uh, a blanket to go with it, but so convenient that it rolls up into a single roll and you can just put it on the back of your bike. This guy right here is a rootless outdoor fire pit that I got on Amazon for about 20, 30 bucks. Uh, the legs fold up inside the metal mesh uh, into this nice little tube that I just put on my bike with my tent. Uh, it's wicked sturdy. I've put three logs on it. Um, I've had 20 fires with it so far and it's held up pretty nice. The chair I'm sitting on is a Marchway camping chair, uh, again on Amazon. There are a few different brands that make very similar chairs. Um, folds up into a nice pack that you can just clip on uh, anywhere outside your bike. So a lot of you want to know more about my tank bag. It's a Burley Voyager tank bag. It has a magnetic base, which just slaps onto your tank and you can take it off really easily. Um, also has a magnetic uh, front pouch so you can put your phone, your maps, um, all that stuff. I put in here all the important stuff, the stuff that's expensive so I can just grab it and go, uh, like my DSLR, charging cables, GoPro stuff. I have a solar battery bank that I use for my phone and my GoPros. Journal, book, kickstand plate that I use for like muddy ground, uh, loose gravel, that kind of stuff. Easy pass for the East Coast, uh, SD cards, matches, lighter, tire pressure gauge, multi tool, um, and headphones. Yeah, that's it. So, this is my cook set, uh, not the one I brought on the trip. The one I brought on the trip was uh, pretty flimsy, did not last a long time. But I have a cutting board. A grill, which I obviously used this morning, uh, in the GSI Pinnacle Backpacker. Um, it's great, nothing sticks to it. There's a pan, a lid, a titanium plate that I put in there, a teapot from my old kit, sponge for dishes, soap for dishes, some oil. This is a Rough Rider foldable chef's knife really great. I keep it separate from the knife I use for wood and stuff like that just to keep it clean, keep it sharp. I uh, make pancakes a lot. Spatula's good to have. It's the handle for the GSI pots. Uh, clips on and off so you don't have to get it hot. 
or uh, let it melt in the fire. A uh, coffee funnel for filters uh, for pour over coffee. Uh, in the kettle, a cup with a reusable coffee filter uh, and spices. Also got fork, knife, and spoon. These are my emergency and repair supplies. Obviously scaled down. I usually bring a chain, tubes, some cleaner, some lube, um, and other things. But here's what I got with me now. Uh, just a tool roll, first aid kit, a portable jump start. This is an air compressor. I can hook up to my battery, uh, top off my tires. Cables for the jump start, uh, and hook up to my battery. Um, my saddlebags are Stan Sport canvas saddlebags. Very cheap, I think they're about 20 bucks, but they're very strong. They've um, held my things for years. Um, they are definitely not waterproof. If I do put things in there that can't get wet, I usually just put a trash bag lining on the inside and it does the job. All right, so the morning fire is almost out. I'm gonna take a little break, do some wandering down by the beach. I'll take you guys along with me. Um, and then we'll get into it later. It's a little cold. It's a little too cold for me just yet. How's it going? You too, man. Alright, so other questions I get asked a lot are about the route. How did I plan it? Um, how many miles did I do per day? So I planned it based on uh, the things I wanted to see. I would like set a pin on Google Maps um, and find uh, the best route every day to get to that pin. And I kind of roughed it out before I left as far as how many miles I could do in a day, which turned out to be around three or four hundred. Um, and the most the longest drive I did in a day was about six or seven hundred. Um, I think my biggest regret with the route would be just timing. I wish I had twice as long. Um, there were times where I, where I would spend a couple hours in places that I really wanted to see. And I feel like uh, I could have had a couple days or three days at these places to really just soak it in. But you know, it, that's not what this trip was. Like, it was a pretty broad stroke and I got to experience things that I would never seen um, and now I know where I'd like to go back to someday. That being said, the places that I would love to go back to, uh, Montana, Utah, specifically Zion, and North Carolina, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Blue Ridge Parkway was beautiful and it was such a good ride. One more regret that I do remember was in Yellowstone. I drove past a buffalo about 15 feet from them uh, and did not film it. Uh, and that was a once in a lifetime thing, I feel like. There is so much that I did not capture in an hour video. I cannot capture 30 days. Um, the hardest parts were not captured, unfortunately, uh, in the struggle of these moments. I, I don't think to take out my camera. Um, but you know, there were times where I mentioned the uh, draining battery, um, laid my bike down in the rain, and this guy came and ran over and helped me out. Um, amazing moments like that where I found myself in desperate need. Um, people came to help, and uh, I did not capture those moments, but uh, I feel like I didn't need to for myself. 
Uh, those are the things that will stay with me, uh, and I don't need video to remember them. Once again, thank you guys for all the awesome comments, uh, comments of encouragement and um, just kindness. It's awesome to see. Um, and for subscribing. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't know what future content I want to put out, but I do want to put out some more riding, camping, that kind of thing, um, because I love doing it. Um, and I love sharing it. And now that it's summertime, now that COVID restrictions are lifting, um, hopefully we can all get outside some more, see more of the world, see more of each other. Um, so until the next video.